and that's trying to put us down so bad that he will use any type of trick he can. I don't know what happened to the video. I just said the video had to end. He will use any type of trick that he possibly can to destroy us. So therefore, we cannot give this special gift that God has given us, which is the, the, the life of Jesus Christ the, uh, that lives in us. We can't just give it away. We can't just throw away our birthright. We can't just say, I've had enough. Forget it. Y'all want me to sin. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. You know, are you willing to give up your testimony? Hallelujah. Are you willing to give up your salvation? Are you willing to give up Jesus? Are you willing to give up your peace? Are you willing to give your soul? That's, I want to look at this one scripture real quick. It's found in Matthew 16 and 26. We're all familiar with it, but we're in the, in the day and time that we are living in. The enemy is pressing on people to give up and to give what God has given us to the world, to just let it go. It says, for what is a man? Not for what does it profit a man? Sometimes that's not interpreted. That's not spoken correctly. The word of God says, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Then it's a two-part scripture. The word of God says, Or what shall a man give? Give, you give, in exchange. Give me this. For his own soul. We've seen a lot of people giving a lot and exchanging a lot just to be in the positions that they are in in this United States of America. They do whatever it takes to do to get the means that they are getting. We know what drugs do to people um, and alcohol do to people if they don't have it. If they are at their lowest low and they want that alcohol or they want them drugs, they will stoop to the lowest of the low to just get that addiction. But we have the Holy Spirit in us and the enemy wants to get us so frustrated till we give up on the Lord or we give up on our testimony or we give up on things that God has blessed us with. It says, when you look at the birthright, well, we're going to Genesis 22 to see what it is that Jacob gave up. What? Okay, he gave up his birthright. So what was that? Oh, it was, it was pretty big. That's what it was. When you look at Genesis 22, verses 16 and 18, it says, And an angel of the Lord called unto Abraham. This is, this is his grandfather. He says, Out of heaven the second time. And said, by myself have I sworn, said the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. He said, thy seed. That means your children and their children's children will possess uh, what God has blessed you with. So it started with Abraham. That's why he's called Father Abraham. Abraham was told by God that, you know, Abraham, you were going to sacrifice your son because I told you to. You were being obedient. So since you are being obedient, this is what I'm going to do for you, Abraham, and not only you, Abraham, I'm going to do this for your seed. So as we continue to read, he says that in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thee. Thy seed as the stars like heaven, and as the sun which is upon the seashore, shall thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. That's big. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned unto his young men and they rose up and went and they left um, and they went on about their business. So we find out that 
it wasn't just a little birthright. Oh, brother, take my birthright. I'm hungry, feed me. No, he gave up his inheritance. He was giving up his blessed, because by him being the firstborn, he was entitled. Now, back in the day, when they had their children, their children were entitled to different things. Um, you know, and so this young man, Esau, was entitled to the big, big, big blessing. But he let his his flesh, he let his emotion, he let his his body, oh, I'm about to die. I don't believe Esau was about to die. I believe Esau was just hungry, just like some of us become hungry. And we know how that is. Go to the first McDonald's, go somewhere, stop at Burger King. I just got to eat something. But if we had a piece of candy... Uh, a, a piece of licorice or a gummy bear that would have sufficed us till we got to eat amen so anyway the topic is what will you sell for satisfaction I say do not sell your birthright do not sell all that God has put in you all that he has entrusted you to do. All that he has brought you from. Hallelujah. And can nobody do you like Jesus. He has brought you a mighty, mighty, mighty long way. And you do not want the enemy to, to you don't want to give the enemy. See, one thing about the enemy, and I don't know if this is on our regular Christ Temple post because I had to just jump back on. One thing about the enemy, his desire is to kill, steal, and destroy us. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Um, sometime you will get frustrated. Sometime you will feel that nothing seems to be working for you. But that is the trick of the enemy. Uh, what God has given you, what God has blessed you with, you hold on to it. And uh, God will continue to bless you. He's such a wonderful God that not only does he bless you, he blesses your seed. He blesses people who know you. He blesses your job. Everything that you touch as a child of God, he can, he can bless and he usually does bless. He prosper. He makes you prosper in his way. So that's really all I had for today was um, the struggle is real um, and everyone is having a struggle. Also, I want to take you to this New Testament scripture. It's Acts 2 and 38. I learned the scripture when I was uh, in Sunday school as a little kid. But this stuck out to me in this text of uh, Genesis with Jacob and Esau. Acts 2.38 says... Um, not only shall you, you know, you repent and be baptized, but it says in, in 39, it says for the promise of you receiving, being baptized, receiving the Holy Ghost, it's just not for you. It says for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord I God, our God shall call. So, when the Lord blesses us and he blesses you, it's just not for you. It's a blessing that you can pass down to your children and um, they can be blessed. In the heat of the moment, Esau felt like what he had didn't mean nothing. And it meant everything. It was, it was birthright. It meant a lot. He felt like it was nothing. Um... And in the heat of the moment, you can lose what you have. And you don't want to do that. You always want to think before you act. And there's a couple other scriptures. You can write them down. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. Hebrews 4 and 12. Luke 1, 46 through 47. I'm going to go to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. You do not want to lose what God has blessed you with. You don't. Uh, 
Let's try 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. And we're going to get ready to close out in prayer. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved, be blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in reading that, we must know that you are made of, of, of it's your mind, body, and soul. So you are made of three parts. And we have to... Uh, be careful and, 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 and work all three parts of our, our three-part being, mind, body, and soul. Because our mind sometimes takes us different places that it has no business taking us. And then our spirit, if we leave our spirit open to things, things can come into our spirit and contaminate the Holy Spirit. Um, and then your soul is your soul part of the man, your feeling part, your, your what you know is really real. Um, how can I support something totally wrong and say that it's right? You know, I can't. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Let's look at the next scripture. Hebrews 4 and 12. Pretty sure we're familiar with this. Hebrews 4 and 12. Talking about the mind, body, and soul. It says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And guess what it is? And it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That is what the word of God is. It separates even the soul and the spirit. <clears throat> Only God can do that. So we're going to end in prayer. I hope that what I've said today blesses you to know that we don't need to sell our birthright. We don't need to give what God has entrusted us with. God's bless you with peace. Hold on to your peace. God's bless you how to love people in spite of themselves. Now that I say is a blessing. I know that it's the Holy Ghost that lives in me when people ha have been ugly and mean and actually just downright trying to take me out on the down low. And the Lord reveals who they are and reveals what they're trying to do. But yet, I have the love of Christ in me. That's only there because of the love of Jesus Christ. If I was in my flesh, I would not even think about the person, let alone have any, any waste of time with them. But people, we have to pray for people who are evil, um, and it says, you know, pray for your enemies. When you pray for your enemies, you'll be blessed. So, Lord, we thank you um, for this lesson. We thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do. We give you all praise. We give you all the honor. And, Lord, you will get the glory out of this. We thank you, Lord, as we're getting ready to close this year out that we made it through this year. We thank you, Lord, that we're praying for our loved ones to make it. We're praying for the world and the nation. And those, Lord, who lost loved ones during this, this terrible time this year, Lord, we ask you to continue to touch their hearts and their mind and their spirit. Lord, give them that hope and that peace that they yearn for. Um, Lord, just comfort them as only you can, Lord, and shield them and protect them from any wiles and the enemy and, and the traps that the devil try to set for them. And Lord, bless us, Lord, to bless others. Bless our children all over the world, Lord. Bless them to be what you've called them to be. For Lord, they're the next generation that's going to have to stand up for righteousness. They're the next generation that's going to have to stand up for truth and holiness. And Lord, our nation has been attacked by truth. They, we've been attacked by a lie coming against the truth. We know what is right. But so many lies have tried to snuff out the truth. But Lord, you are a God of truth. And we're going to stand for what is right. And we're going to stand for the word of God because the word of God is true. And you are true. We give you praise. We give you honor. And Lord, you get the glory. Bless all our viewers. Bless those, Lord, who are going through right now. Touch them, Lord. 
Make a way for them out of no way. Hallelujah. And Lord, let them give you the praise and let them have a testimony saying that ain't nobody did it but you, Jesus. So we give you praise. We give you the honor and we give you the glory. In Jesus name. Amen. You be blessed. If I don't see you till next year, which probably will be next year, because <laughs> this is winding down. You have yourself a wonderful Christmas as best as you can. But know that Jesus is the reason for the season. It's not about the gifts. It's not about the everybody coming to your home and things like that. It's about what Jesus Christ has done in your life, how he has blessed you, how he has kept you, how he holds you in the midnight hour. All about what he's done for you. Hallelujah. So bless him. He's going to bless you. I speak blessings on your life in the name of Jesus. And we will have a better year, a new year. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen.